I remember the moment when I first realized something was wrong. One moment, a flash, a split second. My first birthing experience did not go as planned. My labor was induced, and after a marathon three-day hospital experience, I had a C-section. Surgery hurts. Even while I said, ow, I was immediately enthralled with my tiny new boy, Noah. I could not believe that we had made this amazing, perfect angel. When we arrived home, I was relieved to be in comfortable, familiar surroundings. My hubby held Noah, and I took a nap. It was afternoon. When I woke up, dusk had fallen. I lay there in the fading light of our Brooklyn apartment until it was dark. And suddenly, a feeling of panic came over me. I jumped out of bed, waves of panic now coursing through me. I held that little bundle, and I did adore him, but I felt smothered. I did my damnedest to stay focused and not to project these crazy notions onto him, to keep him calm, assure him I was his, no matter how nutty I felt. This went on for what seemed like weeks. I kept telling myself, what's wrong with you? You have this amazing, healthy child. Snap out of it. I was completely filled with dread. I wanted to head for the door, to run away, to get out. He'll be better off without me. That was it. That was the moment, the flash. I was positive this would be the best time of my life, so why? Why wasn't it? Why was I so inadequate? Days bled into nights and vice versa. I had no appetite, which for me is unheard of. It seemed like I was shrinking, collapsing into myself. At my first postpartum checkup a few days later, my OB took one look at me and said, oh wow, you are not okay. I was lucky. The doctor was amazing, caring, she knew what to do. While we talked, voices were screaming in my head, this happens to other people, it's not just me. She put me in contact with a therapist and shortly after, I began a regimen of antidepressants. I knew it would take time, but still I felt encouraged knowing I was taking action, that I had a plan. Gradually, I began to come back to life, to enjoy things again. It's so hard to realize something's chemically wrong and that it's not your fault, your weakness. I have always been incredibly hard on myself. I still am. And I was convinced I had somehow failed my baby by not being able to have a normal birth experience and that I didn't feel the expected emotions afterwards. Sunshine, roses, pure motherly joy all of the time. One night I was breastfeeding Noah in the quiet at 2 a.m. of our living room, attempting to keep the surroundings serene. Then I thought, screw this, and I turned on the TV. There, on Lifetime, I happened upon Girls Just Want to Have Fun, <laughs> an awesomely terrible 80s flick starring Sarah Jessica Parker in which she's a good Catholic girl who enters a dance contest to become a regular on dance TV and, of course, falls for her bad boy dance partner. Aha! The corny cable TV gods have spoken. Everything will, eventually, be all right. I recently told my therapist that when I'm uncertain of my emotional status, I try to focus on and relish little moments of deliciousness, especially moments that involve my kids. And then she asked me, do you want to prolong those wonderful moments or to have more of them? Hmm. I alternately love and loathe the idea that with your youngins there is no status quo. Things flip in a nanosecond. A precious baby giggle can turn into an earth-shattering wail when you put him down for a nap, but it can just as handily happen the other way around. <clears throat> well, the same goes for me. One anxious, moody minute or hour can suddenly morph into three amazing ones with no impetus on my part. I am, indeed, capable of recovery. Where do I stand right now? I'll take more moments. Evan touching my eyebrow and saying it feels like flowers. Noah insisting to be the last person to tuck his younger brother in at night. These are the things that restore me, sustain me, and when I string them together, add up to nothing less than pure bliss. 
I used to hold Noah's skinny feet while he ate, bare under his little pajama dress thing. I called them the treasure. Evan has feet that were and still are exactly the opposite, little doughy empanadas. <laughs> I latch onto those tootsies, grip them, staying connected, feeling comforted and safe. And I tell my boys, I know it seems like I take care of you, but really, you take care of me. I know now that I've had untreated depression for years, but it was the process of becoming a mother that brought it to light. Lately, I felt more positive than I have in a long time. I've always been a cockeyed pessimist. Make no mistake, I am frequently upbeat, purveyor of wise-ass humor peppered with lewd, inappropriate comments. <laughs> and then at other moments, I feel blue, anxious, and I am convinced that is the real me. And then it dawned on me. Maybe I really am that somewhat positive person. The funny lady that gives so much. The artist that my kids say is awesome and please mommy do it again while they collapse on the floor laughing hysterically at some zany impersonation or character voice I've created. The mother who loves them and always, always lets them know it. The mother who sometimes feels sad or lonely or overwhelmed, just like everyone else, but who is indeed capable of recovery. Maybe that other chick, my own worst enemy, the one I was certain was the true me is the mirage, a passing fancy, someone who must be given air and allowed to vent, but must not take up permanent residence. This notion is simply mind-blowing. Could it be? Stay tuned. <laughs>